Right, we are back. Yes, it's another time for a little bit of a session with his nibs and yours truly. And what a place we are at today. Just look behind. This is one of the most iconic venues in the whole of the world. W1, Rafe 1, RK Leisure, South Lake we're on. Sky's clear, the water is crystal clear on it, which makes what we're going to do very easy. Absolutely. We're going to be getting technical today. We're going to be looking at rigs. We're going to be looking at baiting up how, when, why, and what you should do. Hopefully, we'll catch a few fish as well. And we've got 24 hours, mate. We have got 24 hours, you know, and it gets dark at night. So uh, there you go, mate. But no, all joking aside, 24 hours on here, magical, mate, and it's a beautiful place. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're going to hopefully help you catch fish in difficult conditions. Now, we usually head out to day ticket lakes for these features, but because of coronavirus, many of them are absolutely rammed. Instead, we've come to our syndicate lake to look at approaching clear water weedy gravel pits, which is a problem many people face at this time of year. Right, thing number one that we've got to do first and foremost is find a spot, and this is the hooligan swim on the wonderful Raysbury. Now, out there, I know from previous experience when I've dived it, it can be quite weedy in places. It's fairly early on in the season, it's June at the moment, so it's not come all the way up yet, but there is a fair amount of weed and it pays to spend a bit of time finding a spot. So I've got the old marker float rod ready and I'll talk you through briefly what I do with it first and foremost. You'll notice I haven't got a stem on there. A lot of people use stems. For me, they are a really, really big mistake because the thing with the stem is it confuses you into how much weed is on the bottom. Basically, that will drop down into the weed. If that float comes up, then you can present on it. If it doesn't, there's a chance that you won't be able to and you have to rethink your rigs. When you use a six inch stem that a lot of marker floats come with, the float's already sitting above the weed. So it's giving you a false indication that it's coming up easier. So the best thing to do first and foremost, don't use a stem. You'll also notice that I've got a black tip on the float. I know that orange stands out an awful lot underwater. Yellow is pretty good, but in this bright day, yellow might not be as visible for me. The water's a bit silver, so I'm gonna compromise by having a black top on it, but I would either use black or yellow normally. The rod itself, this is a black's marker. It's 12 foot three and three quarter pound test curve. It's got a nice white tip to make it easy to see the end. And it's also got markers on there, as you would expect. So when you're pulling the line off, you know exactly how far you're going. Next thing is obviously it's very hot. So because braid dries, I'm just gonna give that a quick wet down first because the chances are it'll frap up like a good one if I don't. So I'm gonna stand in the same spot all the time and I'm just gonna aim out to more or less where I think there might be a clear bit, which is straight out there. I'm gonna start short and go long, feel it down going down well and that did actually crack down quite well there let's have a feel of that that was a bit of a lucky punt because I was uh, probably thinking about going a bit longer than that but let's just have a little feel about how far that is one two is it coming up three yep four five not coming up quick enough And I'm feeling all the time that I'm drawing this back in again, just to find out what I'm pulling through. And I think there was a little bit of weed there as well. And it is literally just a case now of getting on with it and you've got to do it and do it and do it until you find a lovely clear spot. And look at that, more weed again, but this is a different one. That's why I felt a good crack down, but it's not coming out there, look, because that is silkweed on the bottom two different areas of different types of weed and that silk weed will sit probably about that thick all over the deck and it's important to know about that because it will affect the type of rig that i'm going to be using later so floats coming up again and it is literally just a case of keeping on going Found a cracking spot out there it is an absolute banger little thin strip of gravel maybe six foot on an angle 
from 20 to 22 wraps going away. So it's like that from where we are now. It's quite easy to miss, but I've had a couple of chucks, felt it down, and I'm very happy. So the next thing is baited up, and I'm gonna use these things. Now, these are just absolutely magnificent. These are marine halibut pellets, and I'm using them in eight and 10 mil. Nice little mix. I'm not gonna put anything else in, because you know what, it's really hot. I think the fish spawned a couple of weeks ago, and they want a bit of energy and high oil pellets this time of year are absolutely brilliant. You've got to be careful if loads and loads of people are using them on the lake, it can put a lot of oil in the lake. However, if it's just you doing it, believe me, it can be absolutely superb. So I'm going to put about 10 spawns out and just spread them around out there. That's more or less where the right hand is going to be. And I think I'll tram line them, putting three on the spot at various different distances. So just dotted up that gravel area. And because there is a little bit of weed around, I'm gonna put two on Ronnie's and I'm gonna put one on my weed rig. And I think uh, that should really do the job. Right, this has to be my favourite rig of all. Since the last six months, I've, I haven't used this exclusively because when the situation dictates it, but almost exclusively, the Ronnie rig. Now that, 23 pound Optimex, size six, medium curve from our range at Razor Point, cart spirit hooks. These are so sharp, they're ridiculously sharp, which is what you want. No need to sharpen any of our hooks like I see a lot of people doing. That sits up, what are we looking at? Oh, probably half an inch off the lake bed. The fluorocarbon pushes it away. Uh, almost any lake bed this can be. If you're fishing over really, really soft stuff, still want to fish a Ronnie, I would put 45 pound blister on it with a couple of pop-ups in a bag to hold it up. But most of the time I'm looking for firmish areas. This kicks away from the lead clip as I've already said. Perfect the situation I want to be in. Little bright pop-up or, or a match the hatch one, but most of the time I'm using a pink, a white or a yellow or a little bit of plastic. Ronnie Rig, can't fault it, easy to tie up, so successful for me. Right, early on, obviously done a bit of leading about, and at 24 and a half wraps, I've got a nice area, it's, it doesn't land with a clump, okay? It lands with a nice, it feels like clay or sand or something. It, it's firm enough to put to, to fish on. So I've got three rigs going out all at the same range. I'm trying to group them all together. Just short of it, probably a rod length short of it, it, I pull up against what in my mind's eye is a, a wall of a probably short Canadian. And then you, you tear through that and you're back in again. I've led it all the way around here and I would ideally like to be fishing a little bit short of that because the wind's quite strong and it is quite deep water. And grouping them up for me, it's not something I do that often, it's quite difficult, but it's a challenge and I want to get it out there. I've also put out, about an hour ago, I put out 15 spoms, the medium spoms, because I can't get the big one out that far, um, hemp and 12 mil monster target up boilies. Now I put them in soak Saturday when I knew we was coming fishing and also knew it's quite deep water here and I want that, it's quite heavy by now, it's soaked in all the sweet corn water, it's dropping straight through the water because I don't want it drifting off. I'm trying to crunch the rods together, and because I found out what I think is a, a quite a large hole in the weed, I don't want it drifting off and getting caught at all layers in the, in the weed. So that's the whole reason for soaking the bait up a couple of days early. The boilies are heavier, boom, down they go. Hopefully fall all the way around this. In, a, in, a, in our ideal world, this little pink thing will end up next to a little tiny bit of sweet corn, but probably nowhere near it. But we'll have a go. The left hand rod, what I'm doing is as I'm aiming, it's on the apex of a house, which is like 300 yards away. I'm choosing which rod is what, wherever they land on, 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 on that house, okay? The, the left hand one is my little fluoro wafter rig. Bit of plastic corn, a bit of foam, so it just sits 
like so. The middle one is a match the edge Monster Tiger Nut um, 15 mil pop up on a Ronnie. And this one, I'm just going to flash a colour on this one, a little pink on a Ronnie wig again. And um, a pink hit and run, which incidentally is Mr. Hughes's favourite, but we won't tell him that. Uh, so I'm going to lob this out now. I hope to God it goes on the right because the others are already where they are. And here we go. Please do not crack off now. Perfect. Bang on, and the right hand rod. Out we go, let it fall straight there. Oh yeah, that landed with a bit of a bonk. It's a nice area. We'll see, we've, I haven't put a lot of bait out here because we've only got the one night. Uh, on here, when I've fished this before, you put a bucket load out. If they move on you, you get a bucket load of bites. But we've only got one night this time. Lovely weather, fishing accurately, as you can see in a minute with my lanes going out like this. Tram lines, they call them. Happy days. Well, I've just had an absolute belter that melted off the spot over there. And we just sat here thinking, you know what? The weather is perfect. It just looks lovely for a bite at the moment. And it's just absolutely flown. And it's actually the second one off this rod. The first one went down lovely. I was confident that it should produce a fish on the old favourite. Lo and behold, it did. And you'll have to excuse me, I'm concentrating a bit because it's, it's just banged round to the left hand side there now, and there's a bit of, a bit of snaggage down here. A fair amount of snaggage, and I do not want this going down and into it. Come on. And the key. Oh, it's stopped. The key is keeping them moving. And I think it's just gone in there. Come out. Just keep pressure on it. Solid, it might be a weed down there. He's still kicking. He's out. He's out of that one bit. Now he gets a line snag down there. Yeah, he's caught on line. Right. I don't know whether that just pinged off, but I can see it. it's going round and round in circles now. And the problem with the line snag is the chances are it's just going to burn through my main line. So I'm going to give it one last try. The fish is going to come back up to the top again. And now's the time that you need really to get a boat out. However, we haven't got a boat local, but I have got something very similar in the back of the van. Of course, I've got the dry suit. So, Ian, can you grab that? Yeah, mate. And then it's going to be game on. Right. Just don't pull him, just hold him. Are you already at your depth? Oh, yeah.
nervous tension. I've got a seal. No, it isn't. It's a rob. A black rubber suit. Bobbing around. See him? He's here, mate. Did you want to spawn with you, Rob? Do what? I think you want to spawn with you. Does he? <laughs> he wouldn't be the first. <laughs> he won't be the last. He certainly but... won't be the last. <laughs> oh, well, well, that was exciting, wasn't it? Oh, it's a lovely little scaly thing. Scaly thing. Oh. Is it? Oh, oh, he's out. It's all full of beans. He's in that side. <sighs> Boom! Well done, buddy. Well, that was a result, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. The odd little hurdle in the way. What can I say? Just look at that for an absolute perler. And yes, this is Raysbury, but it's modern day Raysbury. I haven't quite got my Terry Hearn woolly jumper on, but you know what? It's worked, whatever it is. And that is an absolute burner. God, blimey, that was, uh, that was a bit of a moment. I was just changing my hook link on that other one after it's been through that line. And lo and behold, this one's just absolutely rattled off as well and these bites are something else they really are there's no single beeps of them it just explodes into life and the old spot out there is now obviously rocking pretty well you're beaten you are beaten no you are beaten here we go and he's in. Oh, should we do that again? Boom. Come on. A bit of morning carnage look. Yeah, yeah. No rods working really. really. He's a long one, isn't he? Absolute angry Raysbury male. And this one came on a recast that landed absolutely bang on. And as soon as that lead went out there, cracked down on the deck. I just knew it was gonna be a bite. And it certainly didn't take long. I love the old pink ones, these things. Is the one that I really wanted to show you. This is the one that came in the very early hours of the morning. 25 pound. And as you can see, it is an absolutely cracking fish. They are so nice, the fish in here. And I've got to say that this lake in particular has got a brilliant future ahead of it because there's a lot of these and they're growing now. 
But look at that, very, very pleased with that. And once again, that come down to finding the right spot, getting it on the spot and just getting everything nice and tidy and neat. Well, the result has come from you this time round, buddy. Isn't it? It's strange, isn't it? Because we fish, I don't fish a lot with you, Rob. We're going to be, but we fish very similar, mm. but different, if that makes sense. And we've chosen to do slightly different things here. And um, the left has and the right hasn't, mate. Well, it, it's been interesting looking at the comparison and the result, actually, because yeah. if you think about what we've done, I was fishing at, what, 20 to 21 and a half wraps, yeah. which is 80 to... Uh, 85 yards, 80 there odd. Or that, 80 odd yards, yeah. um, and you're fishing at 100. 100, yeah. So, firstly, there's something we can pick up there. A lot of people think that they've got to go further, and if you go further, you catch yeah, more. Yeah. Clear indication, not necessarily no. the case. No, really? So, so, is it distance? No, not really. It doesn't have to be no, further. No, not at all, mate. Uh, my spot was quite hard. Uh, it was hard to find. It's not yeah. a big spot. You know, there's a lot of weed around it, and it's all about finding that. People almost talk about a spot within a spot, which you see sometimes when one rod goes the, more than yeah. others. Uh, but it was quite tricky to find the spot, but when I found it and it went oh, mate, down your, with a Yours crack, was a crack, like a paving yeah. slab, wasn't it? As soon as you get that crack, you know yeah. that's it. Well, when you, I've watched your new cast, and it is, because it's in here, isn't it? Watch your new cast, and when you when you went bonk, you went like yeah. that. You know. You know, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. you we've, we, yeah. hundred, we don't it hundreds of times, yeah. but you know that cast. And mate. yours wasn't quite a crack. No, it, it was like I said yesterday, it was like almost a sand or maybe a, a tough clay or something. You got a, a bounce, but not mm. a crack. And I was happy with that because fishing short of that was Canadian all the way back, tearing it through the weed. So the, the first, what I thought was reasonable area to, to present on was 100 yards. Yeah, yeah. The apex of that house. And that's what I've done, like, you know, but. They haven't visited it, mate. Depth-wise, I was 11 and a half, 12 foot deep. 13's on that one. So not a massive difference. No, it's... it's. A, well, hey, what's the foot between, mate? Mm. But uh, No, not a massive amount of difference. And in all, in all fairness, not a massive amount of difference at range-wise. But one area and another area, and they yeah, haven't yeah. visited it, yeah. you know? Well, they're what? 40, 50 yards yeah, apart? Yeah, say 50 yards apart, you know, slightly further yeah. out. But it's, it is, but it's, it's a great learning curve as well, isn't it? Bait. I was very, very simplistic on my bait. Yep. Really, the as almost as simple as you can possibly get. Literally, pellets out of the bag. Just pellets, yeah. Sweat them up. That was my edge with it, yeah. really. Sweat them up a little bit, put them in the sun so they do start to leak a lot. And, you know, I, I personally think that at this time of year, just post-spawning, yeah. oily pellets are absolutely brilliant. Oh, I totally agree. As soon as we get to sort of August time, I sort of back away from them because yeah. I don't want too much oil coming out and going on the surface of the lake because obviously oxygen levels, etc. Yeah, fair enough. But I think June, July time, if you want oily pellets, that is the time to use them. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I, my faith is in the monster tiger that bodies. I would quite yeah. happy to cast them off Brighton Pier and catch a bass. Yeah. All joking aside, I, 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 so much confidence. I know what I've got out there. Yeah. If the fish had shifted across to that side of the swim, they'd have eaten we'd it have had bites anyway. Yeah, yeah, they'd have eaten cool. it anyway. Everything's no introduction cool. at all. Yeah. Monster tiger that bodies since joining the guys in September. Unbelievable amount of, of results for me. So what I've put out there and what I've presented over it yeah. has worked for me a hundred times before. Yeah, yeah. But what you can't allow for is the fish have got swim uh, fins, yeah. and if they don't visit you, yeah, yeah, exactly. and that is a great thing. You know, we know how to catch carp, and loads of our mates are, are, are know how to catch carp, but we all have these strips where if you yeah. ain't on them, yeah, yeah. you ain't catching them. So let's have a look at rigs as well. Rigs-wise, yeah. actually, it was quite similar because we're yeah. both using a Ronnie. Yep. Uh, and then we both sort of got a balanced rig as well. Yours was more on the deck. Yeah, mine, mine was, was right on the deck in all fairness, Rob. So, no, there's no difference there, mate. The, mm. the only difference I can see is that the fish, it's not an excuse because we've all done this a hundred times. Yep. They're there and they're not there, mate. And yeah. when you haven't got the option of changing from there to there, <laughs> you've got to That's suck it up the sea, haven't you? you just got to so, get on with it, mate. You if you're not on them, <laughs> yeah, if you're not on them, you're not going to get them. Yeah, just become so. a gilly, mate. But lo lovely trip. Well, we ain't gone yet. You know, there's always a chance. Halfway through this, it'll go, Bee! and I'll say, oh, well, one did visit the right side of the swim. <laughs> but, um, mate, you fished it well. You fished deadly accurately because that is a tiny strip of gravel. Uh, and again, lake bed, yours yeah. is rock hard gravel and stones like in the margin. And mine clearly isn't like, you know, so. 
Well, look at, looking at my three rods as well, actually, the left hand rod, I've only had one bite on, and that was just recently. I've just I've got another one down there now, and that yeah. was after a recast yeah. because I felt it should have gone and it hadn't. And this, this is one of the key points I'll make all the time. If you if you think you should have had a bite and you haven't had one, rechuck it. Rechuck it. it. That's Move got it. to be a real change something. A really important one because the middle rod was the one that was more or less smack bang yeah. on that crack all that the time. Was and that's the one that made you smile most. every time you chucked it right. Yeah. To be that, fair was, to you. that was the easiest one to find, but that yeah. was it was like a, an angle for me. So yeah. trying to get on something that's probably four or five foot wide. Yeah. Uh, on an angle yards, is hard. Mate. And that wind I got you know, I tip me at you. Oh, what you doing here? And, and as I say, when you got it right, ten yeah. casts later you went. Yeah, but it's it, you've you know you've got to do that, haven't you? The, it, it would be easy to to chuck it out there, miss it, chuck it out, and think, oh, that'll do. But no, actually, no, no, it's no, no. It's got. Well, that's to be why ninety percent of the fish get caught by ten percent of the anglers. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be fussy. Yeah. You've got to be fussy. You know, so damn the crack. Is. That's when it. you've got the crack, you're going to get a bite. Absolutely, and speaking of which, I have got another one down there, so we'll just have a quick look at him as well. <laughs> Mate, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure. Uh, really yeah, enjoyed it. I look forward to the next one. And here's that one that I've just had. Once again, pink hit and run on the spot job done. It's been a really good session. It's been noticeable actually with the fish that I've caught. I think six bites in total now that uh, with the exception of one they've all been male so just after spawning these guys are definitely on the feed and like that pellet. But uh, that's it. It's been an absolutely brilliant trip. Really really enjoyed it and as always it's great company. This one, the baited area hadn't done a bite, so this one, very powerful fish. As um, this morning, there was a lot of carp activity to the right here in a slightly deeper area. So basically, I pulled in my little pink hit and run and, um, and pinged it out towards that area. Just keep an eye on these other lines while I'm doing this. Pinged it out towards the other area, and in all fairness, it's, it's roasting hot. Right, I am just watching these other lines. Roasting hot, so you really are not expecting something to go on. I'm gonna to have to come here. Um, and this one's whizzed off. I don't really wanna drop the rod because it's very, very, well, I'm gonna to have to, because it's right over here. I'm not doing this in weedy waters because it can result in a nightmare. Right, yeah, so the little pink hit and run has been picked up by whatever's on the end of this and it feels quite strong. Yeah, it's a good fish. It's probably a hippo. I'm gonna have to have a net slung down here in a minute, Rob. Because uh, I ain't got one here. I ain't got one here, I've got two ears. Ooh, it's a hippo. It's a nice one. It is a nice one, mate. Yeah. It's not the 33 pound 12 ounce common we kept talking about that's dominated our conversation for the last 24 hours. But it's, uh, you know what, it's a carp. It looks a nice one on all, Rob, doesn't it? Love all this, all this kicking about in the old beer water. Well, I suppose I'll set the circumstances, is not it? You getting a bite, and then this one pinging off, mate. There does it. Oh, don't go over there, Mr. Reesbury fish. There we are. Oh, you little, you little terror hawk. There we are. He's in. Nice one. That was worth a lob, wasn't it? Here we go. 
the old Ronnie. Nice little Ronnie rig, proper nailed. Pink hit and run. Now I've done a little chat a while ago with Rob because we're sort of winding down. And this is just proof in the pudding, never give up. After our little chin wag, there's a deeper area to the right of me which is very, very silty. There was a few tents rolling. I've had nothing off the baited area as I said. One calf stuck his head out. I'm not saying it's this one. That'd be, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Um, so I pulled the pink rod in, the right hand rod, threw it in the deep gully which landed really soft. And about half hour later, low 20. So lessons learned there again, certainly for me, and I do it all the time to all fairness, never give up until you get in the van. Just put him down, give him a bit of water. Thank you, uh, my lovely assistant. Lovely low 20, VS, South Lake, Mirror Carp. Chuffed to bits for that. Not quite as many as Rob's had. But been on the score sheet in the last hour or so. Well worth it.